What's up everybody? I hope you're just as happy as I am to see this video finally going live. It's been five full days of work for me and I've totally ruined my schedule for this video, but hey, finally, here it is. Inferno for Dummies, and if you haven't watched the other episodes on Mirage, I would highly recommend you to watch it. This series is meant for all the ranks, but obviously Gold Novas will learn more than Longtime Global. So what's Inferno for Dummies, you may ask? Well, in one video, I will show you all the basics you need to know if you want to play a map. This one on Inferno, and this video is built in five parts that you can see right now. There's a timestamp in the video description if you would like to skip in between. And if you have a friend that sucks on Inferno, like come on we all have one, send him this video and in 15 minutes he should get better. Also tell me in the comment section which map should be the next one, don't forget to drop a like please and I will leave you with the part number one. Inferno has seen a lot of changes through time, from 1.6 to CSGO and its last revamp in October 2016, but the layout itself didn't change this much. It's always been a map mixing close range fights, lots of corners and easy ways to fall back to a passive position or a cover. But it's always a map that has delivered during tournaments, especially on CSGO, and the current meta allowing a powerful rush with only pistols must help in that sense. Playing Inferno, you will have to remember this, map control and utilities, these are the keys. Map control, because as I've said a billion times in my videos, if you leave banana open to the cities they can deny you with just one smoke and let the other guy to rotate. And utilities, because without it you wouldn't be able to counter a passive defensive playstyle. Inferno is kind of a map built for franchises because you can retreat after every fight. LOL! For example, in long here, I'm gonna have a shot at the first duel, so I'm gonna kill someone or miss the shot. Anyway, I'm gonna fall back right after to a safer position, and here I am once again. I'm gonna have a duel with an option to fall back. Duel, fall back. Duel, fall back. This is how it plays out. What about short? Well, it is the same. Duel, fall back. Duel, fall back. Until you're trapped. And what about banana? Well, the exact same stuff. Duel, fall back. Duel, fall back. It is very easy to find the duel and then fall back. You get it. The whole map allows you to stay alive even if if the T's are pushing on you. I'll take for example Dust2. What fallback options have you got there? Pretty much none. You're doomed to commit to your duels unless you dig a tunnel, there's not much you could do here. Map control is also something very important on Inferno. If you don't challenge banana or apartment, you don't know what's happening and it's very easy for a city to push and take useful infos. You see, CSGO is not just about the frags. If I push banana and hold the visual on T-stairs, I will call my teammate to rotate, I'm gonna stay here alone and even if I don't kill anyone, the intel I'm gaining here will be decisive in the round. Yes, I won't have any kill, but surely my move will help my team a lot. And apartments work the exact same. I see a lot of people being afraid of going in apartments, so they end up camping outside, they are afraid to go in, and at some point in the round they will realize there's only 40 seconds left, so they find themselves having to push like crazy inside apartments, most of the time ending bad of course. This is why utilities are extremely important on Inferno, you have to use them to push the cities back and deny them. And that's why in the part number 5, I will show you guys some of the basics you need to know, but for now, we will move on to part 2, which is how to defend. As I said before, defending on Inferno offers you to fall back and especially on the A site will be extremely efficient. The usual way of holding it is adaptive to your current map control. If you still have mid, usually you will have a crossfire. Then eventually someone dies or a smoke denies one of you and you will have to fall back to a more defensive position. The player long can play here with someone in pit or balcony, put another one on site and you will be very hard to kill. In just one split second you're gonna be able to turn around and help one teammate in need. And here's a few spots that you can use. You are playing pit, you can jump on this bike and it's gonna be very effective, trust me. The T's can barely see you, plus they won't expect you here anyway and the only downside will be that the weak spot is that you are exposed from apartments, so make sure that there's a smoke or that you have a teammate on top of shocks watching it for you. Shocks is the two boxes here by the way. Playing shocks is also a great spot, not only can you see in apartments, but you can crouch back to cover and peek when you want. And don't forget that you can also jump on top of the boxes to surprise someone in short. Balcony is also used a lot, coupled with a teammate on site, you can hold a short and if things goes messy, jump in pit and improvise from there. And about graveyard, I would say that this is the riskiest spot on the bomb site. I don't really like it. Once spotted, you are kind of stuck, there's no way to fall back, but also worth noting that you can get wall banged with that wall here. You're not really gonna be safe here. 
And for the long player, you're gonna have different spots. This corner is of course a dead trap. Simple money will be enough to get rid of you. I would say that you can use the spot, but the moment you lose mid control is the moment you have to get out of here. If your teammate lost the crossfire with you, you're gonna be alone without anywhere to fall back. So instead, you wanna stay to this corner. And then you're gonna have library and arch, and they are both kind of special to play. By the way, if you don't know, there's a tiny gap here that allows you to see a little bit of arch, just so you know. But if your goal is to play defensive and help your teammates, I would recommend you to stay here. Just be aware that you are gonna be exposed from apartments if you are too close to the wall. From here, you can support apartments, you can support long while holding short, and that's gonna be extremely convenient for your teammates during a rush. So what about B? B Banana is a very strategic spot of the map. It's very tight, not that many corners to hold, but whoever holds it secures a certain advantage for the round. As a CT, just like a T, you will have the need for utilities if you're gonna play it. At the beginning of the round, make sure that you are buying what you need. I would recommend you one smoke, one money, one nade. Buying these will help you a lot to hold it, but also make sure that you communicate with your teammate. You have to play together, you really do. I would recommend one of you throwing a molly and the other one throwing a nade in the first place and here's why. If the T's are coming to banana early, the nade will slow them down, they're gonna run slower, and then the molotov will make them burn if they keep pushing forward. If they wanted to cross the molly, the nade will ruin it for them, so from now on you've denied their rush. You are in control and you can set the pace. Once the money fades, you can throw another one, or you can face banana, you can use your smokes, buy some more time. The next step will rely on how you feel in the moment. I'll just give you a few tips though. If you want to clear banana, throw a smoke this way, molotov like this, flash yourself in and you will only have the left side to check, making your life way easier. If there's a smoke close to the wall, you can boost your teammate. Watch out though because this wall is very well bangable, if that's a word. <laughs> I'm not sure. And if even with this you can't hold banana, ask another teammate to join you. Hold it with three guys at the beginning and once the thing are secured, he's gonna rotate. This is actually very common and especially for the pistol round by the way, so take care. If the T's are putting too much pressure and if it's getting too risky, maybe you're getting out of utilities, now will be the time to fall back. So what about the passive defense? If you have an op, you can take a peek here, but as soon as you shoot, you must rotate. Don't face again. There's gonna be a lot of spots to hold the site. You can boost a teammate CT, so if they smoke you can see above, you can hide here, you can hide there, new boxes behind the pillar, shadows, pools, and what that surprises them a lot is crouching behind the fountain. During a B push, the T's are very likely gonna smoke city and spools, and this is why I don't like the setup with one spool and one city. It will only take two smoke and you will be out. Instead, I would recommend putting someone on site, like new boxes or shadow, those are very efficient spots. I'll finish by saying this, the role of defenders of a bomb site isn't to kill everyone. On B, you're gonna be two versus five, we don't expect you to kill all five of them. What we want from you though is communication and buy as much time as possible while trying to kill at least two or three of them. Get a frag, relocate, throw a flash, buy more time for your team. And here's a few tips. If you are new boxes and the T's are closing in, turn around, locate the grey stain on the wall and the flash. Use it to pick out and kill a few of them. You can flash like this. Staying shadow, you can see if a T comes in that corner. If they are planting the bomb, you can bounce a nade or molly this way. We've just seen the defense, now what about the attack? I've been in countless matches where my teammates don't spread correctly on the map and we end up getting backstabbed or locked in banana. If you are attending a slow round, make sure you spread correctly, two in banana, one or two in mid, but make sure that you have someone holding second mid. Also, there's a lot of room for snipers on inferno and picking mid or banana will give you good chances to find an entry frag. Please remember that utilities aren't optional here, you have to buy some if you want to give yourself something to work with. About banana, it feels like I'm telling you in every Every video, don't let it go for free. Don't give it away to the cities because they're gonna have the control of it and the intel you gain is very useful. So how to do so? I would recommend throwing a molotov like this above the wall at the beginning of the round. It has to pop and spread behind the barrels? I was about to say car but <laughs> it's not a car anymore. This will prevent the cities to push and to face you while your teammates take control of the area. From there, you will have the use for more utilities. You can bounce a nade against the wall like this if you want to hit someone behind sandbags. You can also throw it above the wall if you want to hit someone holding the corner. It's a very tight area and utilities are very efficient. If you are throwing a molly against sandbags, you know that it's clear so when you come out, you won't have to check it anymore. Ask one of your teammates to flash you in and then you go. Just make sure you push them back on side 
site and once it's done you can afford to let someone here alone while two other guys are gonna help around the map like me or apartment. This leads to the question if you are playing a slow round what will the routine be? So three guys will go in banana throw molotovs, nades and push the cities back just like we said. In the meantime someone holds mid and another one will hold the second mid and nope don't do it from here because if a city pushes apartment you are not gonna see him from there. Once banana is cleared and the cities are pushed back on site two players can rotate and leave the other one holding banana alone. With those two players you can help to clear apartment or to face mid with the op and from now on it's gonna be relying on how confident you are and what kind of entries you've got during the round. This will be the most basic routine, it's gonna give you some kind of structures to your round. You don't have to put three guys in banana if you don't want to, if two is enough so be it, but spreading on the map this way and pushing the cities back with utilities will grant you a lot of rounds. And here's a few things that I find very useful for the T side. Even in global, when I ask for a city smoke, you will find a lot of guys throwing it like this. And that's of course a big no. It's such a huge risk, you are picking with a smoke in your hand, if someone holds it, you are dead. And even if you're not dead, you're gonna panic and you will miss the smoke. Learn how to smoke it, it's very simple and I will show it in the part number 5. There's a smoke that I use a lot to push out of apartments, stand on the crack, turn around, throw your smoke like this, and then you can use a flash to throw it the same way. It allows you to pick out of apartment while seeing pit and this is very efficient. When pushing short, facing a player is a pain in the ass. This is why you have to use utilities. Throw a molotov or maybe a flash, why not a nade if that's all you have, but make sure that you use utilities to help yourself in that situation. Once the bomb is planted, you can use the spot on the bike. It's very efficient because they won't see you here, they won't expect you here either, and you can see them pretty well. You can also stand on this box on the bomb site if you want to see in library and surprise someone. One final tip is that you can bounce a molly against the skybox here if you are retaking the bomb site. A smoke will work as well. Oh no! About the tips, unlike Mirage, I don't think there's that many tips that you will find useful to play matchmaking, so I've tried to gather as many as I could, and I've kept only the useful one or the one that's worth noting. So you are in banana, but the city is smoked you off. Ask a teammate to boost you here, and you're gonna be able to pick coffins, that's a very useful one. Speaking of coffins, it's very easy to wallbang. You can boost someone here, you can go on top of these boxes alone, hiding behind the fountain is also a great way to surprise. If you are trying to set your weapon, you can jump here. You can flash yourself out of arch this way. If you stay balcony and move a bit to the right, you will be able to see someone standing in boiler. Here's a one-way smoke in pit, aim in the middle of the brick, right throw and you're good to go. If the T's are coming short and you are trapped in pits, you can bounce a flash against the door and get some easy frags. You can boost someone on top of the roof and you can jump yourself here, but I must say it's very hard. Instead, ask to a teammate to boost you on the rooftop, then you can jump on your own and from there you can surprise someone facing mid for sure. If there's a smoke short, you can jump on top of the wood and maybe you'll be able to see above. The basic smokes, what you need to know if you're gonna play Inferno. Learning smokes is boring, I'll give you that, but luckily Inferno doesn't require that many smokes anyway. For B, you will need two smokes. You'll find some people throwing a city smoke from here, and I'm not a big fan because of this corner, someone can pick anytime pretty much. So what I would recommend is go in this corner instead, that way you are covered. You'll have to aim up so you'll find this edge, go a little bit down, then left and throw. The smoke is gonna land city, and you can throw it while being safe, and it's gonna cover city entirely. To attack B, you're also gonna need one more smoke, which is gonna go coughing. So to do so, you will have to locate this brick, you'll have to place yourself on this edge. Now, turn around, look at the tree, you will have to aim precisely here, and simple throw. Since it's a simple throw, it's gonna work for both 64 and 128 ticks, and it will cover spools, of course. For the A side, you will need a smoke long, short, and arch. About a smoke long, there's gonna be two smoke, one that is safe and one that's a little bit less safe. So if you wanna begin with a safe one, you will have to go on top of balcony. So make sure you don't miss your jump, which happens quite a lot. Then place yourself on this edge of the balcony, look up so you can find the flower pot and place your crosshair on the left side of it. Here, throw and you're good to go. 
This book is gonna bounce a couple times and totally cover you from long. If you're having mid control or if someone is with you, you can hug the wall on the right side and as soon as you see the pillar, throw the smoke against it. Just make sure that you are aiming above this rooftop here, bounce it against the pillar and you're good to go. You don't have to be that precise, you can just throw it pretty much randomly. As soon as you see the pillar, you can bounce it against and it's gonna smoke off long, always. If you want to go long, you will also find very useful to smoke arch. So to do so, you will have to find the edge of this wall, line up against it, and you will simply aim here. Throw, and you're good to go. That's of course going to be very useful if you want to go back on the A side. If you want to smoke short, you will have to get yourself in this corner. Once you're in, like this, make sure you are stuck, turn around, you have to locate those two, whatever this is, and aim on the bottom right of this one. Throw, and profit. And that's all you need to know, these are the basics, and if you are watching this video, it means you're willing to improve, and that's something good. But make sure you give yourself the means to. Learning smokes isn't the best part of the game, yet it's necessary. And that's it for this episode of Inferno for Dummies, I really hope you guys liked the video. Just a cheeky reminder that there's another episode on Mirage, and that you can support me by leaving a like on this video and sharing it with your friends. I'll see you next time, thank you again for watching, and take care guys.